In this episode of Supply Chain Now Radio, Tammy Grasick, Chief Operating Officer of Lund International, talks about how their focus on people, products, and brands empowers employees to do their jobs better, and blue sky thinking helps drive product development. So our first guest today on Supply Chain Now Radio, we welcome Tammy Grasick, the Chief Operations Officer and GM of OE with Lund International. Good morning. Good morning. Glad to have you here today, Tammy, especially as, as busy as, as y'all have been. For those of you that may not know, all three of you in, in all of the U.S., London International is a leading designer, manufacturer, and marketer of branded automotive accessories. In fact, as we were saying pre-show, I bet many of folks in this room here have Lund products, vent visors, fender flares, hood protectors, right? Any hands in the room go up? Bo, I think you've got all that on, on one of your uh, 4x4s, right? Absolutely. Large majority of the Lund products are made right here in the U.S., right, Tammy? They are. Which is really neat to see. Uh, in fact, speaking of that same theme, about 500 of the 1,200 total Lund team members are our neighbors here in Georgia. Correct. That's, Between our manufacturing facility and our corporate office, yes. Wow. Um, and why is that important from a leadership team standpoint? Because we truly believe our one of our models for our company is people, products, and brands. Mm. If you ask anybody that works in the organization, they will tout that people, products, and brands exactly in that order. One of the things that our CEO is very proud of is the fact that we value the people, we empower the people to do their jobs, mm. and contribute that to the overall success of the business. Clearly, that formula is working. In big news that was announced just a few weeks ago, Lund was recently recognized as Gwinnett County's large manufacturer of the year for 2018. But that's really just one of a string of successes. I, we were talking pre-show about how Lund was also named the Georgia Automotive for the whole state of Georgia, the Automotive Company of the Year in 2017. And, and of course, there's a whole string of acquisitions and, and many other accolades. What is that people product brands? That's clearly DNA, right? Part it of the is. company. What else is driving a lot of that growth that we're seeing at Lund International? A lot of it is the new products that we've developed. Over the course of the last four years, we've acquired four businesses. Mm. Um, through those businesses acquisitions, we've specifically focused on innovation and new products. And when I say new products, you mentioned some of our product lines at the beginning, but we have a variety of products. One mm. of the things that we don't talk a lot about because it's not manufactured here in Georgia is AMP Research, mm. which is an articulating running board. So... When I think about the products that we've created and the revenue that the new product innovation has driven for the organization, it's meaningful. It's mm. very, very meaningful to the to the company. And, and the rate of which Lund has been launching new products. Uh, you mentioned uh, 85 new products since 2016. Since is that right? 2016, yes. Wow. So what, what does it take for a company to do that, that level of innovation? And Innovation is such a buzzword, right? To a lot of folks, when they hear that, they think about it's a brainstorming and a whiteboarding. But to actually launch products and do it and execute on it, that's a whole different ballgame. So how, how does a company that has all these parts to make and satisfy certain you know, current customers, how do you all make that happen? With focus. Mm. I can tell you that we tried a variety of methods of product development. Some of them were not as successful as mm. current results. And it took a team to actually take a group of people and focus them on product development, product innovation. Um, we have an engineering team that works together in a blue sky environment. Mm. They get to come out of the day to day. I develop this piece this way, et cetera. They've had the opportunity to actually get creative. We've got a gentleman that does an enormous amount of just sketching and drawing and is allowed to get his out of the box thoughts as possible. Mm. And many of the employees throughout the organization are encouraged to submit their ideas to this team as well. Mm. Now, can you talk about the culture uh, where that's acceptable and that level of kind of, you know, blue sky thinking is accepted and encouraged where a lot of companies are afraid to take that kind of risk and put resources to things that don't exist, that may never exist, but you're doing it in, in an effort to really push the envelope of what could be rather than what is currently. Correct. I think it's, it's not only for the benefit of product development. It really allows a group of people to think outside the box. When you talk to our engineering staff, if you're an engineer for automotive accessories, 
and you work for a specific brand, you're focused right. primarily 98% you of your the time down there. And that, right. right. And you discourage people when you don't let them be creative. Mm -hmm. And we encourage not only from an engineering standpoint, but throughout our organization, we encourage creativity. And you have to have enough confidence in your staff to allow them to be creative, come back to you with their ideas. Give them that space, that mental space. And that probably helps you in recruiting. That helps you grow the company as a whole because they know that this is a place that allows that to occur. Mm. Yes. Now, does any of that inform like maybe acquisition targets where you're like, you know what, this is, would be cool here. We can't do this here, but there's this cool company over here. Maybe we should look at acquiring them. We do. When we have the acquisition strategy that we look at is complementary products because we are everything outside of a vehicle. Mm -hmm. We offer some internal, but we're primarily on the external part of a vehicle. Um, we will look for complementary to what we already do. And some of it does come from Blue Sky thoughts. And then how, when you're looking at a target, how do you kind of make that contact and then see if they're a culture fit? You know, they might be great at making their product, but if their culture fit isn't there, is that something that, you know, takes them off the board? Like, how do you work your way through that? Well, I don't personally do that. I will be um, pulled into that if it makes it through the first round. Right. Um, the CEO of our organization works with our private equity company on the acquisition strategy and so forth. And if it's something that is of interest to us from either competitive, complementary, or a skill set that we may not have, it'll move to the next step. Mm -hmm. So speaking, so the, um, the aggressive acquisitions that we've seen over the last few years, mm -hmm. what, is, what does it take to, to, um, to see that through? Because a lot of companies we read about, a lot of companies we probably talked about, they acquire a company, everything goes crazy, right? <laughs> So to keep, especially in the automotive space, how do y'all keep that, that focus that you mentioned earlier as you're bringing on more volume, more SKUs, more team members? How do y'all keep continue driving forward? No pun intended. There's a very talented group of people that help with the acquisition. We've added recently, because of the acquisitions, we've added some very strategic positions within the company. Mm -hmm. We've been very fortunate to maintain a very strong workforce that's worked for us for a number of years. Yep. I mean, our average tenure in our manufacturing side of our plant in Georgia is right around 18 years. Wow. Uh, so in the pre-show conversation, as we sat down, we were talking about some of what we were going to discuss today. You talked about how uh, supply chain and people, right? Mm -hmm. Really were big fuel, uh, built big uh, ingredients in, in, in part of the lung success. So eight, to have your average tenure be 18 years, folks know the business, they know the culture, they're encouraged to be creative when it comes to problem solving, especially when it comes to, to new product development. So it seems like you've got a really unique uh, company and organization. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, I think it really starts from the leader of the organization. There's a lot of passion in our organization mm -hmm. about the products that we produce and the products that we sell and the people that work there. The other thing that's really key is the people that work in the organization, whether it be I'm the person that's recycling or I'm the person that is the CEO. Everybody understands their purpose. Mm. Now, what has your experience been have being in, located in Georgia? Can you talk about that? Like, has that, how has that benefited the growth of the company? It's a great distribution hub. Mm. Um, one of the main reasons that we put our largest distribution center in Georgia was because of that. As far as the manufacturing side of the, of the organization, um, Auto Vent Shade was our was our leading brand of Lund International that resided in Georgia, and it's our longest standing facility from a manufacturing standpoint with the amount of employees that we have. The culture here and the availability of workforce is is one of the main reasons that we've resided where we do. Mm. What could we do better? What do you wish we you had more of? Mm. Time. <laughs> We're going to work on that. Got it's you to laugh time. on that so, <laughs> let's, on the time machine. Let's continue this theme because, you know, kind of circling back to where we started, clearly U.S. manufacturing, having operations here, putting uh, U.S. Uh, team members to work, that's really important to, to London International. Very. So, so earlier you were talking about some of the operations that you, you've brought in to the States, some of the mm -hmm. onshore. Can you tell us a, a, a recent story related to either an acquisition or maybe an earlier stage in the company? Certainly. 
one of the first acquisitions we did was we wanted to get into a particular product line, and that product line was manufactured in Taiwan. Uh, we onshored that business in about six months into our facility in, in Georgia. And when I say onshored, we created tooling, created product lines, released that product line from a marketing standpoint and a sales standpoint into the aftermarket. Because of that, opportunities came our way to actually acquire the leading brand of that particular type of product. Mm. We moved that facility into Georgia as well. The workforce availability here and the capabilities that we have from a distribution standpoint to combine multiple brands and multiple products and ship from one location was key for us as well in those decisions. Mm. Well, um, you mentioned brands. So Lund, 11 brands. Yes. Five of them are industry leading. Yes. 55,000 SKUs. Yes. Uh, and you've been based right here in Buford, Georgia since 2002, I believe. Is that right? We have in Buford, yes. Yeah. Incredible story. No wonder the, the recent accolade, accolades. So so if you can, and, and of course, we wouldn't ask any of our guests to share anything they didn't want to ask. Moving ahead, looking at the remainder of this year and the next couple of years uh, from an acquisition standpoint, continuing that aggressive strategy? We are. There are a few acquisitions being evaluated currently as we speak. Lund will continue to grow. We are the one of the top three leaders in the automotive accessory industry. And I don't anticipate anything different than that. No slippage. In fact, uh, watch out, number one and number two. We're coming for you. So before we switch gears over to Bo Groover, one last question for you, Tammy. Uh, so working in the automotive space. Yes. That can be foreign to a lot of folks. So it, it, can you speak to any unique dynamics that can be found in the automotive industry, what pressures, the, the production environment, the What's unique to automotive uh, that you may not confine in some of the other industries and sectors? I don't know that there's anything unique specifically to automotive. I'm sure that depending upon what type of products you're manufacturing and, and selling, we're all experiencing the same types of pressures. One of the things that is a little unique for Lund is that we go across so many channels of distribution. And when I say that, we make 30% of the product that we make is actually distributed through the OE channel, which mm. most of the end consumers would never know that mm. that product is made where an aftermarket product is made. Probably the pressures are the blending of those channels of distribution. Mm. There's a lot less opportunity for two-step distribution. There's a lot more opportunities in direct-to-consumer and e-com, and that is changing business. Sure. As it once resided, especially, again, I can't speak to other industries, but from an automotive standpoint, there are not as many steps in the distribution chain. Mm. And therefore, our business has changed considerably mm. and will continue to. And it will evolve more and more in a direction of less steps in a distribution channel. Are, are you seeing any uh, ramifications of like the younger generation not having the emotional connection to automobiles as maybe... Um, people in this room uh, growing up, a car was, you know, a symbol of independence and they could, a lot of people couldn't wait to get in their car and, and then they fix up their car, whereas the younger generation are more likely to use a service. They don't even care if they own a car, a lot of them. They don't want to drive at the first second they turn 16. Has that had any impact? It may eventually, but, you know, it's interesting you asked me that. We had a, had a group talking about racing and now, um, some of the particular types of racing that exist and the popularity of some of that may be becoming less, but yet some of the more smaller, more interactive um, with consumers are gaining popularity. Mm -hmm. And I think it's about how you engage. And one of the things that we've recently done from a manufacturing standpoint is started to work with some of the tech groups and some of the colleges that lean more towards um, individuals that find manufacturing and engineering cool. Mm. And we've done some videos about our products and the company. And you can see the lights go on in mm. some of that particular group that you're referring to. They, If you can get them to understand the cool factor of what they're actually making right. and where it's going and what's happening to it, um, there seems to be some excitement around that, mm. as well as... I think there's a balance there. It's not just automotive accessories that make the vehicle look special or cool. A lot of the stuff that we do 
is something that the end consumer would never know is manufactured in our facilities. Right. It's just a standard part of a vehicle. Well, uh, clearly, I uh, appreciate you sharing some of what you shared today, but uh, what a great and very capable leadership team that Lunds has as well. Tammy is very gracious, but Mitch and Tammy and Christy and men and, and Anna and, and all the leaders they've got at Lund creating the right environment to grow in a tough space, in a space that's, that's uh, continually changing. So, Appreciate you taking time out. Congratulations on all of your, you. your recent success. And we're going to be looking forward to you uh, moving right up the rankings and, and tech, uh, tackling number one, number two in the years to come. So thanks to, thank you, uh, Tammy Grace, COO with Lund International, for being here on.